Hello everyone, welcome to podcast nine and three quarters, a Potter podcast. I'm your host, the Half-Blood Princess. Today, we have the first book club episode. I'm actually reading Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone for this, and it's my first time reading this version, so this will be interesting to see what differences I can spot between uh, Philosopher's Stone and Sorcerer's Stone. So I've reread the first chapter this week, and I am ready to dive into getting this dissected. Um, First, I want to say rereading this chapter again, um, you know, I I always notice little different things that I didn't notice the first time I read it or the second time I read it or the third time I read it. I can say that this chapter, The Boy Who Lived, I have read more than any other chapter in the book um, because I've decided to you know, reread the Harry Potter series at one time. So I go and I read the first chapter and then I don't finish or something like that. So I've definitely read this first chapter more times than any other chapter I've ever read. I remember my mom reading it to me the first time I ever read it. Um, that was awesome. So the first line of the Harry Potter books is a pretty familiar line to everyone. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four Privet Drive were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. A lot of people know this line and I think that it is a great introduction to this chapter. This chapter has two main sections and the first section of the chapter focuses on the Dursleys. What I love about this chapter and this portion of the chapter is the fact that it is not in the movie and it gives you this background story on the Dursleys that you don't get from just watching the movies. So they talk a lot about Mr. and Mrs. Dursley. They describe the characters. Um, They talk about how Mr. Dursley is a big beefy man with no neck and Mrs. Dursley is a thin blonde with too much neck, which comes in handy because she likes to spy on her neighbors. Um, Dudley, they describe him as the perfect baby. They had everything they wanted, a normal family, everything like that. Um, But then they say that they have this big secret. They wanted no one to know. Mrs. Potter was Mrs. Dursley's sister. So that is the first mention of the Potters in the Harry Potter book, is the fact that the Dursleys have a secret that Mrs. Dursley is Mrs. Potter's sister. Okay, so Vernon, Mr. Dursley, he goes to work, and it's basically starting off like normal, but this is when we start to get like little foreshadowing hints that something is about to happen. So like when he's on his way to work, he sees a cat, but the cat is reading a map, which is weird because cats don't read maps, but he kind of just like shrugs it off. But like as he's driving to work, he starts seeing people in funny outfits that like people he just don't think should be dressed like that um he even mentions that one man has got to be older than he is and he's wearing a funny looking cloak and it's not halloween um so he gets to work and he kind of forgets about what's going on outside he decides he's going to go get himself a donut so he walks across the street and he sees more people dressed in those funny outfits and that's when he hears it he hears a whisper of the potters and that's when he's like oh my gosh he feels fear um he goes back to work and he just tries to shut it to shrug it off he thinks potter might be a common name Oh, he had a hard time waiting the rest of the day, but he decides he's not going to call Petunia and he is just going to kind of just let it be for now. He, it's got to be something else. Um, so just as he leaves, he bumps into a man who is also wearing a cloak. The man says, oh, don't be sorry, my dear sir. Rejoice for you know who is gone at last. And even muggles like yourself should be celebrating. 
This is the first time we hear the term muggle, so that's exciting. Um, when he goes home, he sees that same cat he saw from this morning. He tries to shoo it away, but it doesn't go anywhere. It just stares at him. Well, he decides not to tell his wife, Petunia. Mr. Dursley sat down and he turns on the news. Big reports on owls being everywhere during the day. They also report on a downpour of shooting stars. How strange. Mr. Dursley is kind of frozen at this point. Owls, shooting stars, whispers of the potters. He's just going to tell his wife. He asks her if she's heard from her sister, and she's like, no, why? And he explains, you know, the news, the funny-looking people, and she's all like, so what? He said maybe it had something to do with their lot. And then he says their son must be Dudley's, Dudley's age. What's his name again? And that's when she says it, Harry. His heart sinks horribly because he, that's the name that he heard on the street earlier. He looks out the window before he goes to bed and that cat is still sitting there. She looks like she's waiting on something. He just kept thinking of what would happen if people found out that they were related to them. His last thought before he goes to bed is even if this did have something to do with the Potters or their kind, they wouldn't want to have anything to do with the Dursleys. They knew that they hated them so much. But how very wrong was he? So, this is, so that was like the first portion of the chapter that is not in the movie so it's kind of like a background leading up to where the movie starts off the movie starts off 11 years from that night um and then that's when this part happens so a man appears on the corner um and the cat is watching and the man he just appears so suddenly out of nowhere so, and there is nothing like this man that anyone on this block has seen before. He's tall, thin, has, he's very old, long silver beard, and his hair is long and silver as well. Um, both of them, they're long enough to tuck into his belt. His long robes are purple, his cloak is purple, and he has on high-heeled buckled boots. Um, his blue eyes, he has a half moon spectacles and a very long crooked nose. It could be no one else but Albus Dumbledore. So this is the first time that we meet Dumbledore. As you know, just like in the movies when he pops up in that very first scene on Privet Drive. Um, he realizes he's being watched by the cat that's down the street. He looks up, and the sight of the cat, it, you know, amuses him. He chuckles and says he should have known. He, he pulls out this thing from his pocket, and it kind of looks like a silver cigarette lighter. He flicks it open, and he clicks it, and the nearest street lamp goes out with a pop. So he clicks it again and again and again till all the lights on that street are out. Um, he finally gets to number four, Privet Drive, and then he sits down next to the cat, and then he starts talking to the cat, and he says, fancy to see you here, Professor McGonagall, and that was the first time that I realized that, you know, uh, Transfiguration. I thought that was so cool. That was one of my favorite things in Harry Potter's Transfiguration, how you can turn yourself into, like, animals and other things like that. I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, so fancy seeing you here, Professor McGonagall. He turns and smiles at the tabby cat, but it's not a cat anymore. Um, instead he's looking at, um, a severe looking woman wearing square glasses. And the square glasses are the same shape as the markings that were around the cat's eyes. Um, and she wore an emerald cloak which is a pretty popular question on Harry Potter trivia. If you are into that, they always ask what color was Professor McGonagall's cloak, and it was an emerald cloak. Um, <laughs> she says, jokingly, how did you know that it was me? And he says he's never seen a cat so still. Um, so then they start talking, and they talk about how the celebration had been going on all day, and how even the muggles knew what was going on, talking about shooting stars and owls on the news. Um, they talk about, it'd be crazy if the muggles found out about them on the same day that you know who was defeated. 
Dumbledore offers McGonagall a sherbet lemon, which I think is funny because Dumbledore is always eating candy or some sort of sweet. You'll figure that out throughout the series. I always think that's so funny. Um, Dumbledore starts talking about how people should call you know who by his real name. So, you know, there's always some suspense to this, like who is you know who? And Dumbledore says his name, Voldemort. Just saying we shouldn't be afraid of a name. McGonagall says that it's different for Dumbledore because you know who had always feared Dumbledore and no one else. That was the only person he had ever feared. Feared, And he mentions that Voldemort has power that he will never have. But that's because, you know, Dumbledore is just too noble to use the power that Voldemort uses. Um, they're talking about rumors flying around and that she heard that he had finally been defeated. But she wouldn't believe it until Dumbledore confirms it. In which Dumbledore does confirm that last night Voldemort showed up in Godric's Hollow. Godric's Hollow is where the Potters live. And that she heard that James and Lily were dead. James and Lily are Harry's parents. Um, she also heard that he tried to kill the Potter's son, Harry, but he couldn't. And no one knows why. But they're saying when he tried to take his power or when he tried to kill him, his power broke somehow. And now he's just gone. Harry Potter is, has defeated Voldemort and no one knows why. Like, just a little boy, they can't believe it. Um, this is where Dumbledore tells her that Harry will be living with his aunt and hung uncle. Um, and McGonagall, she's upset because she's been watching the Dursleys all day and they're just not good people. She doesn't feel like Harry should be left with them. Um, Dumbledore says that it's the best place for him. Um, and he's written a letter to the Dursleys and that he just knows everything is going to be okay. McGonagall, she just doesn't really believe that he should live there because he's going to be famous. He can't grow up here. Dumbledore says that's exactly why he needs to stay here because he's going to be famous for something that he's not going to remember. He's going to be better growing up away from all of that. McGonagall finally agrees. Um, Dumbledore says that Hagrid's bringing Harry. Uh, McGonagall's like, should you trust Hagrid with that? And Dumbledore says that he would trust Hagrid with his life. Um, so this is when they hear a loud roar coming from the distance. And then a huge motorbike falls out of the sky and pulls up. And there's this huge man on the bike who is Hagrid. Um, they describe him as twice as tall as a normal man and at least five times as wide. Um, he's too big to be allowed, they say. His wild, long, tangled, uh, bushy black hair and beard. He has vast arms. Um, I feel like they describe him a lot bigger than what he appears to be in the movie, but that's okay. You know, they have to change some things for the movie, but in the books, I definitely thought that Hagrid was going to be way bigger than what he was. Um, so in his vast arms, he's holding like a bundle of blankets and that's when Dumbledore asks him where he got the bike and Hagrid says that Sirius Black lent him the motorbike. So that's a, a question that is in trivia a lot too. Where did Hagrid get the flying motorcycle? He got it from Sirius Black and he lent it to him. Um... So they talk about um, him getting the, he says that he didn't have any problems getting Harry. The house was destroyed when he went to go get Harry, but he did get him out in time. Um, so they look at the bundle of blankets and inside there's a little baby boy fast asleep. He has jet black hair and a cut shaped like the bolt of a lightning on his forehead. McGonagall asks if that's where... She doesn't even finish her sentence because Dumbledore says, yes, he will have that scar forever. Um, but sometimes scars can come in use, he says. He has one himself on his left knee, which is the perfect map of the London Underground, which is also a very common Harry Potter trivia question. Does Dumbledore have the map of the London Underground on his left knee, which is yes. 
Dumbledore takes Harry up to the house and lays Harry on the doorsteps and puts the letter on top of the little bundle. They stare at him for a few more minutes and then Dumbledore says that they should go and join the celebrations. Hagrid says he has to go return Sirius's bike and then he takes off and then they say their farewells and then Dumbledore turns around and leaves. Um, when he gets down to the corner he pulls that little silver cigarette lighter back out of his pocket, the little put outer, and the lights go back into their bulbs. Um, he looks back down the street, and sure enough, McGonagall has turned back into a tabby little cat, and that's the end of this chapter. So, I don't know how about you guys feel about this chapter, but I definitely love this chapter. It's one of my favorite chapters in all of the Harry Potter books because, like I said, I have read it so many times. It really sets the staple of what's going to happen. Um, you know, really, she just it writes it and gives you so much background and puts you in a really good place um, as far as how to understand what is going on. So... I love this chapter. We got to meet several different characters. We met Vernon and Petunia Dursley and their son Dudley. We also met baby Harry Potter. We also met Dumbledore and McGonagall and Hagrid. Um, so yeah, I thought this chapter was great and I'm excited to read the next chapter. Chapter 2, The Vanishing Glass. That's a good one. I can't wait. Um, so I should have the next episode out next Monday. Until then, make sure you guys read the next chapter. And like, follow, share, subscribe on all social media platforms. Okay, love you. Bye.